I don't think anybody knows this. I have yet to say this. And I think you could make like a fun like 24 hour uh, or, or like a five day story uh, that, that about this in just what happened last week. So we were not supposed to launch until Tuesday. We launched on Monday because we, we went to a couple of, because the science is so detailed. And if you just look at a press release without like the scientific papers, without all the, the data, without sitting down with the scientists, you could just say, oh, it's not a dire wolf, right? Like, like, like I could easily have people get to that conclusion very easily. But I think that what we did, which I thought was smart, was we went and spent hundreds of hours with Time Magazine and with The New Yorker and with Rolling Stone and with a couple of key outlets and brought them completely on the unfold. We actually moved the wolves to a secure location and let them see the wolf because we live in a in an AI generated world. Like, who's not to say someone couldn't just generate something, right? Like, not that we did, <laughs> we would ever do that. But I mean, but that's the, that's the level that we put into that. You know, we're certified by American Humane Society. We you know flew the wolves on private jets. We literally brought in American Humane Society. We had, I mean, we had uh, 15 personnel with them at all times. We wait, we waited till they got acclimated to this new location. Just think of it. So we spent a lot of time and thought into this, right? Well, then we we're supposed to launch on Tuesday. And so on Monday, we had all these people that have covered us over the years. We were gonna give them the heads up. We actually did at a scientific paper and we had nine handouts, nine handouts and an 11 page uh, press release. So we had a lot of material. We were gonna give it to all these people uh, under, under embargo so they didn't feel left out, even though we went really deep with these other people. And we said, we think this is a story that's gonna persist. So we did that. Monday morning, I'm getting in the shower, kiss my, my nine month old son, uh, say, oh, I'm gonna go get ready for work, kiss him goodbye, about to get in the shower, uh, looked at my phone, it's the cover of the New Yorker. New Yorker broke the embargo. So <laughs> that happened and our website's not live. The hundreds of press people that we've worked with for years, for years, that have covered us pretty favorably when we didn't even have animals, uh, feel betrayed. Uh, people are like, you know, Time Magazine's calling, being like, we, we, you're on the cover of Time. Like, what, what, do you, what, what, what did, did you do? Did you do this? Insane. <laughs> wow. So I'm on my, I'm in my car, speeding to one of our labs as fast as possible. And it's like, websites going live, people on Twitter are like, there's Laurel Mipsum on the website. And we're like, no shit, the website wasn't supposed to be live. And it's like, we had uh, about two hours of content for YouTube that explains all the making of, we we're gonna roll out. We we're just like, push everything live. So, so that was Monday. And then all those stories that we talked about came out and they're all super positive. But no one got to digest the, the scientific paper, didn't get submitted to bioarchive. There was just all this stuff. So then Tuesday was, wait, wait oh, by the way, Monday, we're going to talk to all our scientific advisors, give them an update on the project because we we're worried that it could leak because it was just so cool. Our scientific advisors are calling us being like, why didn't you tell us about that? Like, it was, just, it was an insane the ripple effect. Best laid plans. No, no, it didn't. Wait, wait, let me just give you, I know, like, I, I know we have limited time, but I, I, you have to know how crazy it was. Yeah. They broke the embargo. That's really, really, really. It gets, it gets way worse. It gets way worse. Yeah. So I called up uh, Revive and Restore, who's an incredible nonprofit. You know, I love Ryan and I love Stuart. They actually, to your point, Peter, have been talking about the extinction for a long time. But they're a nonprofit, right? It's like this takes hundreds of millions of dollars in systems theory modeling to, to actually achieve this, right? You can't just do it with a nonprofit. And so I said, hey, just so you know, there's. Uh, uh, I, I was going to call you today to tell you about what's coming tomorrow, but this just happened. And I will tell you, we did meet with the Department of Interior um, and they're excited about classifying de extinction as a form of conservation. And the feedback was overwhelming. They're like, we've been trying to do this for 10 years. Oh my gosh, this is huge. That's Monday. Well, then Tuesday, we get this academic backlash, which is, you know, no one cares about two things the science, which blew my mind. And I, as I mentioned, I thought it was a travesty. And no one cared about the fact that while we made three dire wolves, and yes, they're dire wolves, there were four red wolves that we cloned using a new non-invasive cloning technique, which I'm sure we'll, we'll talk about with, with you, Salim, in a second. But we, we, we developed a new technique to clone that's less invasive for animals. We made four red wolves, which are the most critically endangered wolves on the planet. There's only 15 left in the wild. Wow. wow. No one covered that either. Right, and then it became a philosophical and semantic debate on what makes a species. But what's interesting 
is there's about 30, I thought there's 11, there's about 31 ways to classify a species in all these different ways, right? And so by many ways, a polar bear and a brown bear <clears throat> should not, are considered the same species, but they have a different species name and uh, they look completely different phylogenetically. So there's all these different reasons or different ways to do this. And so that became the discussion. So then we're like, like fighting fire and just kind of like, not really trying to explain ourselves, but just saying like, educating people, like not trying to persuade, but just educating, like there's actually a lot of ways to, to do all this. So that was Tuesday. <clears throat> and then Wednesday, and then by the way, the conservation community is super stoked about, you know, at least new tools in conservation. So I was like, okay, well, it's a win, whatever. So then Wednesday, there's a cabinet meeting. Which obviously we're not a part of the, the president. Like, like the U.S. cabinet. U.S. cabinet. There's a cabinet meeting. And, you know, we have yet to, we have not talked back to the Department of Interior. So we don't know the full context of the meeting, right? Because we're not in the cabinet meetings. We're not part of the cabinet of the United States. And um, a comment was made about de-extinction. And, and uh, the Department of Interior and Secretary uh, Burgum is very passionate. He told us in the meeting with us that he's excited about getting animals off the endangered species list. But that's not removing them, that's recovering them. That means that we have enough of them that's, uh, that's healthy enough that they're no longer on the, and he made a comment that we put things on the endangered species list, but they never come off. And so how do we get animals off using technology? And so we thought, it, but, what, but once again, we live in a moderately polarizing climate right now. And so that became, uh, and, and I don't know if they, I, I, I can't speak for the administration, but that became, De-extinction is now being used to get rid of endangered species. Like, <laughs> wait, what? So that was my Wednesday. And then, and then Thursday, I was like, we'll just answer whatever questions come up, right? And so, so last week was a little bit of a, a, a crazy thing. But going back to your, your original question, you know, at the end of the day, like, that was one week in time. And Colossal is looking at 50 years. And our goal with Colossal is to bring back these species as well as uh, use all those technologies to save existing species. And so in that uh, model, um, you have to think on a 50 year horizon. So if you get great press on day one, which we did, and you get crazy press on day two, that's okay. Those are two days in a 50 year journey. And I think you have to think like that.